Yeah. Hey everyone, Dr. Charlie Johnson, physical therapist here. In today's video, I want to share a personal case study of a woman uh, named Melanie. She's right here. Say hi, Melanie. Hi. Uh, who came to me with sort of some hip, back, leg stuff. I had seen hip specialists, back specialists, a bunch of different people, uh, and is still unsure about what's going on, but uh, is set up for spine surgery, actually, I think, coming up, and we're trying to prevent her from uh, having us. So I want to walk you through sort of how we're going to bring some clarity to that to determine is this a back problem, a hip problem, sciatica, what is it, uh, and I want to walk you through sort of what I'm thinking there. So before I do that, just so everyone uh, watching knows, I help people get back to normal without pills, injections, or surgery, so we definitely want to prevent her from having that. Uh, and for anybody out there who's looking for natural relief, call 484-552-3767. So here we go. Um, so Melanie, is it cool if we talk a little bit about your story here? Yeah, yeah. Awesome, so um, yeah, tell me a little bit about sort of what's been going on, like how long you've been dealing with this, and then uh, I'll just pull some other stuff out of you if it's cool, like ask some questions, and then we'll draw it up for everyone here, and then I'll bring her through sort of a brief exam and walk through uh, you know, my mindset of what I'm thinking. Cool. Yep. What concerns you? What brings you in? What's going on? Um, yeah, so it started about six months ago. Okay. Um, I don't really know how it started or what happened, but um, like wasn't something specific. But I had some like back pain on the left side, um, and it would kind of wrap around the front, like into my groin a little bit. Um, but like down the front of my leg, into my shin, and like around my ankle. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I went to a back doctor. I went to a hip doctor. They kind of each pointed to each other and... So I've got this surgery scheduled. I really don't want to have it, and I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. Okay. Um, and then did you have injections? Did they do an injection? I think you said one to your hip, one to your back. Yeah, and it didn't, didn't really work. Okay, so just to get this um, right, a lot of times people see me with this issue a lot of times where they go to the back doctor, and the back doctor sees things as a back problem, right? Uh, and the hip doctor often sees things as a hip problem, or they just point fingers at one another. So you've had, a lot of times they'll do injections to try to determine if like what area is the problem they try to use it as sort of uh, a diagnostic thing where you know the idea is, is hey if we give an injection to the hip and you get relief from that then it must be a hip problem right or if um, we give an injection to the back and you get relief of things it must be a back problem but uh, you know and that doesn't work all that well uh, it's a good thought but it just doesn't uh, in this case you haven't had relief from either so then it's like what do we do? So Melanie's looking for some answers. So I'm going to bring some clarity to this. Um, you know, off screen, I know about her story. So I'm going to share a little bit here again, if it's okay with you, um, and we'll just spell it out and we'll go into an examination. So you can see sort of what we do and how we would work through that process and maybe how somebody watching us at home could do the same. So here we go. So, um, this is a picture of the kind of like, I don't know, pelvis area and down as if somebody's looking from the back. Uh, and then from the front. So this is the uh, left side of looking from the back. Uh, this is the right side and so on and so forth. They're labeled in uh, orange. So uh, it's her left hip, you said, right? Left hip back area. Um, and by the way, like there's this saying in medicine, right? That if you listen to what the person's saying, they'll often tell you the answer. So you feel as though it's like, what's going on, do you feel? Um, I mean, my hunch is it's my hip. Okay, so your hunch is that it's coming from your hip. All right, so um, on the left side, actually, this is screwed up. It should be a little different. Here, we'll do this. Try again. All right, so from the back, right, she's got some like lower back discomfort. It started as a little bit of that. Then it kind of went down towards the hip area and then it wraps around the front, a uh, little bit in the groin. And then I think you said it goes down towards the knee and down the leg. And you even mentioned like feeling some shin pain, like a band around um, the, you know, ankle area. So, uh, you know, what, what's going on? Well, the question is, right, is this a hip problem? And this is sort of where we start with everybody. We start with what I call a deck of cards. This idea that when somebody comes to see me, the first thing I'm working through is like, what could this be? So I'm sort of shuffling through. I'm saying, well, this could be a back problem, and eh, this could be a hip problem, and this could be sciatica. And these are the things, right, that we have to sort of work through. So we've got hip, we've got back, and we've got a nerve, or in this case, like sciatica problem, right? Where is it bothering her? In these areas that I highlighted. Uh, when does it bother you most? So I think you said right when you were like sitting for a while and then going from a sitting to a standing position to be super like stiff and achy or yeah and after walking for a while but okay. also when I sleep walking and then sleeping 
not cool. That's a main priority. Anybody I work with uh, is that we have to improve sleep because we know that people who don't sleep, uh, they just have more pain. Uh, they generally have higher like cortisol levels or a little bit more stressed out and that keeps the pain cycle going. She's not exactly sure. Uh, this is sort of a piece of the puzzle. She's not exactly sure what uh, started it and we tried to dig in there, but we can't um, figure that out. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, right now, I guess I'll walk you through a little bit of my thought process, and then we'll go to the examination. Obviously, you know, we have to ask, is his hip, back, or nerve? Uh, it started off with some back issues, so it could be a back problem. Um, now she's got some groin stuff, which points me more towards a little bit of like a hip thing. And here's the thing. I know that the hip... Uh, can cause some groin discomfort, but you can also get what we call like referred pain. So it's this idea of if you've ever had somebody push on something, maybe a, a knot or something like that, an area in your body and you feel like some of the pain travel somewhere, uh, even though you're pushing up here, you might feel it radiate. Uh, we know that the hip can actually cause some symptoms down the leg uh, into the knee. In, in fact, we have uh, cases where people have had knee replacements uh, thinking it was a knee problem. It was actually the hip. Uh, because the same nerve controls both the hip and the knee. And then we also have uh, symptoms that can radiate all the way to the shin uh, and uh, over top of the foot. So what you'll see a lot of times is that um, in this case, uh, Melanie was sharing with me that she, she went to the hip uh, specialist. And the hip specialist uh, you know, was moving her through a couple different things and talking to her. And when she mentioned that it was all the way down into her shin, and into sort of her ankle. She felt like she had a tight band over top of uh, her ankle. The hip physician, after especially on top of the, uh, the injection not working, the hip specialist automatically sort of um, you know, threw it out and said, it can't be the hip because the hip doesn't send signals down here. It's got to be sciatica or a back problem, which can often refer there. So then the back specialist, as soon as they heard this, um, did the injection, didn't respond, so then they were kind of scratching their head, but they thought, hey, it's probably something up here because they did an image and they showed, they showed some ugly stuff, right? Some arthritis, things like that. Uh, and uh, here's the thing, it shows up in like, um, in 80% of people over the age of 50, uh, even younger folks, arthritis starts as young as like 25, uh, and it's actually just a completely normal part of just being alive and being human and using our body. So uh, this was sort of uh, a finding that popped up and they were kind of blaming this uh, for everything. Now here's the interesting thing. When I asked her when she went to see the specialist what type of examination they did, meaning they took images and they did the injection, but did they bring you through many movements or? Yeah. Yeah, so this is a common uh, experience for people. And they come to me because they're frustrated and confused um, in that they go and they see these specialists and they don't spend that much time with them. They don't get to really listen to the uh, whole story. And then they don't even go through a movement exam. And a lot of these problems, Melanie is explaining that, you know, when she sits for a while, or when she does a certain movement, walking for a while, and when she's in a certain position, she gets the symptoms. But none of these things were evaluated during the examination with the specialists. They're simply going off symptoms and then the results of their images, which we know are not all that great. So, um, you know, so we've got hip, we've got back that could potentially definitely cause all of this. And then we have to decide, hey, we know that the sciatic nerve can cause symptoms all the way down the leg. But she's telling me she does not have any form of numbness or tingling, um, you know, any excessive weakness in the leg. Uh, anything else funky going on there that would make me think this is a nerve problem. So they're just preliminary thoughts there, but what we're going to do is we're going to systematically go through a quick couple motions of the back, go through a few motions with the hip, and then go through a, a very good self-test to determine if the nerve is the cause of a problem. Uh, and then we're going to wrap it up so you can see just sort of my thought process there. So here we go. We're going to go through an examination with Melanie. We're going to go through an examination now. Uh, and the first thing we're going to look at is standing, just because that's where she is. Um, and we're going to look first at the back because that's sort of the most uh, upstream, if you will. And then we can sort of look at the hip, look at the nerve, and look at everything downstream. Um, so we're going to start with just seeing how her back moves and seeing if that changes her symptoms. So through the examination, we're really trying to determine um, what specific movement brings on her discomfort. So we're trying to establish a movement kind of pain relationship there. Um, so we're going to first look at the back. Uh, and then go through hip and nerve problems. So here we go. So first thing, I just want to see how the back is moving. Can you go ahead and touch your toes for me, please? As far as you can, yep. 
Anything with that? Are you okay? Uh, a little bit of a pinch here. All right. Now, is it okay if we do a few more? Meaning, like, in your experience, if you do one thing and then you stop doing that one thing after you feel something, does it seem to go away pretty quickly or yeah. does it linger? No, it does. It goes away pretty quickly. Okay, cool. So I feel confident moving forward with more motions. And uh, I like to assess the effect of uh, multiple motions, so repeated motions, because sometimes you do one thing and it could just be a fluke. So I want to see, uh, number one, what happens as I do more motions. Uh, and what is the trend of doing more motion? So a lot of people are sort of led to believe like, hey, when I do this motion, it hurts and that's not good. But oftentimes, if you don't explore repeated motions, people will stop at one or two, but the more they do, the better it feels. And that's pretty cool and sort of um, enlightening for a lot of people. So uh, if you can, go ahead and touch the toes for me, just for the sake of you know the video, just a few times, and let's see what happens with it. So you've got some stuff going on here for anybody watching. And you get a little bit down the leg, I think yeah. you said earlier. Okay. Yeah. All right. And keep going. Just a couple more. Okay. One more. All right. So tell everyone what happens when you do that. Yeah, it's, it's getting worse. It's starting to go down this way. Okay, got it. All right. So um, here's what we're going to do. Now, think sort of like a mechanic here. I'm letting you inside my brain. Um, this could be, right, because her back is sensitive to being rounded. You could say, and maybe the back specialist would say, hey, that's a back problem. But we can actually tease out by just changing one variable, thinking through this really systematically and saying, hey, could we actually, uh, is this a problem with her not liking that motion of her back? Or is it because when she does that motion, she pinches um, in her hip, right? So we need to figure that out. So I'm gonna remove the hip as a potential uh, component here. So what I'm gonna have you do is I'm just gonna have you relax this hip and sort of slacken it. So this way, it's not as pinchy when you bend down. Um, and go ahead and touch the toes now. No. All right, so what happens there? Much better, yeah. Okay, okay much better. So notice that if she brings the hip forward, <laughs> we'll put it there. Now touch your toes. All right, what happens? Yeah, it's worse. Okay, so when we just change the hip component and we bring it more forward, right, it closes down on the hip quicker and it causes an issue sort of in the groin and down to the knee. And is that exactly sort of what you feel, like those symptoms? Yeah. So it causes what you, you know, came in with? Yeah. All right, but then when we slacken it, and then she goes to touch, it sort of opens up the hip area. So we can see now that, yeah, I mean, when she moves her back, it looks like the back could be the problem. But when we just change how her hip is positioned, we can also change the symptoms. So that tells me right off the bat, this seems more like a hip issue. All right, so um, now just stand here for me. Um, and go ahead and bend backwards for me as far as you can. Hands on the hips. Go, 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 go. Very good motion. Any problem there? No. Okay, go ahead again. Anything there? Mm, a little bit starting in here. Okay, got it. And what does it feel like? Is it just like a pull or? Yeah, but like a pinch, a bit of a pinch. Okay, so now, again, we could ask ourselves, is this because of the back? Notice the back motion looks really good. Or is this because she's getting like a stretch on a hip that's stiff and doesn't like to move? So we could literally just have her sort of Go up like this, so this way we kind of slack in this, right? And now go ahead and bend backwards. And back on up. Any pain or problems there? No, that's better. Yeah, so again, when she changes the hip position, her back looks great as far as motion. Um, any type of like pain across the lower back or no? No. All right, great. So um, yeah, we can change the hip and we can change the fact that she either has symptoms or doesn't have symptoms. Again, an indication that provided the back moves so well that this is looking more like a hip thing. Put the heel down for me. Uh, and step it back, um, you know, just like this, and actually face away, face like the uh, my diplomas or whatever. <laughs> yep, and relax that foot. Put it on. I'm just gonna have you bend left and right. All right, so go ahead and just put your hand on your hip, bend to the right as far as you can for me. Go, 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 go. Good, and go the other way as far as you can. Good. Any major issues there? Um, no. Okay. Yeah, so motion looks really good. I know uh, people watching might not know what good back motion looks like, but I'm telling you, she has really great motion um, either way, and that didn't cause any issues. So now go ahead and take a seat right there for me. So now she came in with some left-sided, uh, you know, her issue is on the left side, so I'm going to look at the right side because I want to be able to compare here. And in this uh, sort of position, I can isolate out the hip. So she's just sitting here. Right, do you have any discomfort just sitting here? Great, so she feels okay. I'm gonna wiggle the right hip around, and I'm also going to look at how the nerve is moving. So in my brain, I'm looking at the hip, and I'm looking at how well her nerve is on this side. 
and I'm going to compare this to this side and walk through it. All right, so I'm going to move this hip around. This is quote unquote her good hip. So you see she's got X amount of motion here. X amount of motion there. And that feels okay for you? Mm -hmm. Cool. No problem. And go ahead and pull the toes up for me, straighten this leg. So this looks at uh, sort of the ability for the tissue or the hamstrings and the nerve in the back of the leg, especially because we pulled the toe up, uh, to stretch on that side. Uh, so she has, you know, an angry nerves, they don't like to be stretched. So she has good, healthy kind of nerve motion through that leg and her hip wiggles really well. So now we're gonna look at this side. Um, so we're just gonna move it side to side and look at the same stuff so we can compare, all right? I'm gonna go slow. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what happens there? It starts to go in here. Okay, all right, got it. So less motion right here versus there-ish, right? And she gets some onset of her kind of groin and then kind of down into a thigh and knee area. I'm gonna go this way. Mm. Okay, S same thing. And, and actually, if I try to push on this, it just feels like it doesn't go all that well. So it's stiff and it causes the same symptoms that she came in with. Now the question is, okay, it seems again, because that's the only variable I change, it seems as though this is looking like a hip issue. Um, now I want to know though, because as she alluded to, when she went to see the spine doctor, um, you know, they said, hey, well, you're having shin stuff and ankle stuff that's got to be sciatica. And then the hip doctor, as soon as the hip doctor heard that she had anything below the knee, they thought this is a back problem because uh, while it's not super common, um, yeah, it's not very common that the hip refers down there, but it can. And I've seen many cases of it causing the shin and ankle pain like she's describing. So a simple test, one of the best tests we have to determine if somebody has sciatica is to stretch the nerve. And if somebody um, stretches the nerve uh, and they have symptoms, well then there's a pretty strong indication that the nerve is irritated. Notice though, uh, generally people also have complaints of numbness and tingling and she does not. So already I'm not thinking that, but let's just go ahead and move it anyway. So go ahead and just uh, straighten this leg for me. Awesome, any pain or problems? Mm -mm. Great, so the nerve looks like it moves really well and actually symmetrical to the side. It's looking like a problem within the hip joint. So go ahead and if you can, um, I think we're good there. Lay on the back for me. So again, I'm gonna look at her right side and just bring her through uh, some motions. You let me do all the work, all right? So I'm just gonna look again, try to isolate her hip. And this is again, her good side, her right side. So good hip motion there. We did this in seated, so that's good. That's good. And I'm gonna kind of bring her hip up and cross over and rotate the hip in a little bit. And this is a really good test to determine if there's something uh, you know, irritated within the hip joint because it kind of pinches uh, some of the structures in there. And, and again, it's a really good test to determine that as well as sort of pushing down uh, in the hip. And I don't expect to find anything here. It's just, I want to have a comparison side to side. So I know what her normal is, all right? So pretty good hip motion here. Just to make sure I wasn't making anything up, I will also stretch the nerve uh, in this case. Most people have sciatica, will have limitations here. And in her case, she just feels a stretch, but any issues there? Great. Um, and then last little thing, I'm just gonna look at it on this side so I can get a sense for how she's moving. There's a test that can determine um, pretty well if there's a problem within the hip joint. It's called a, called a log roll. So literally somebody can just take your leg and roll it in and out. You'll see that it doesn't move that well and it can bother people if there's a problem within the hip joint. So now I know what that moves like. I'm going to go to this hip and we're going to see what's going on here. I got all the motion, or I got all the, uh, you know, the weight of the leg. All right. Tell me if I have to stop. I'm going to do it slow. All right, so what are you feeling there? Not so, it's starting to come down here, so. Okay, so kind of growing down a little bit in the front of the thigh. Yeah. Right, so she's getting some kind of, again, her symptoms when I get to about this level. Now notice, this is interesting, right? Just think about the story. So she's been having trouble when she's been sitting. So if she's sitting in a car and her hip has to go any higher than this, because she's sitting in a bucket seat and it has to move up higher than that, or she's just sitting in a chair that brings her hip just, or her knee just higher than the point of the hip. She's sitting on an annoying, annoyed hip, like in a position that the hip doesn't like, right? Even on the table, does that make sense? Yeah. So that would make sense that if you're sitting in that position for a while, then you go to let it down, mm -hmm. oh man, it's gonna be really annoyed and uh, stiff there. So that's one motion there, again, looking like the hip. Um, we already know that 
this is a little annoyed and stiff. I don't even need to go into that pinchy test position because she already has it. Um, and then I'm going to let this down. And I got the weight of the leg. Um, and I'm saying that because it's important um, in that when I look at this motion, you okay with that? Yeah. So if it was a true sciatica problem, somewhere between here and here would shoot numbness and tingling uh, down her leg and or she would just say, stop, don't do that. It's really uncomfortable. I don't want you to do that, all right? So I wouldn't be able to go any further. Um, sometimes what will happen is if you see a specialist for the problem, they're quickly going through an examination, if you're lucky enough to have one this thorough, um, is that uh, if you, if they don't instruct, you know, in this case, Melanie to uh, not help at all, what happens is Melanie's going to kind of lift the leg herself. So go ahead, as I'm doing it, and yeah, sorry, that'll cause, um, that'll cause problems uh, within the hip, and it'll stop her from lifting the leg anymore, and it'll make the specialist think that it's a true, um, you know, positive test in that, oh yeah, look, she can't go any further because her sciatic nerve is a problem. When in actuality, it's because she's firing the hip muscles, which are irritated and cause uh, pain, all right? Um, last thing here, so I'm just gently gonna roll this, let me know if there's any problem. Yeah. All right, so where do you feel it again? When you come in, yeah. All right, same type of location or, yeah. okay. Yep, so again, just moving the hip and only the hip as a variable, uh, she gets some symptoms there, all right? Um, now, go ahead and show me, just curious here, um, show me the position that you sleep in. Do you sleep, you prefer to sleep in on your back side? What, what works I'm best for you? I'm a side sleeper. Okay, is that just because you like to do it, like habit or? I, I, it's just the way I like to sleep. Okay, got it. So show people like how you would normally sleep, right side or left side? Usually on my right. Okay, got it, so go ahead. Yeah, and just for camera, yeah, it's good. The right size, so, so that's how you would fall asleep, right? Yeah. All right, got it. So everybody just take a look at this and picture it in your brain, take a snapshot, and then go on your back. Thanks. So just like we talked about with sitting, when she brings her hip up to here, ow, and that's basically the position you need for sitting. So she doesn't even have the motion she needs to sit because something in the hip joint is irritating. Now, if you just notice the way she side sleeps, well, what did she do? She crossed this leg over, brought it up and over, and, I mean, how does this feel? Yeah. Uncomfortable. So that is reproducing, or she's basically putting herself into a, um, a hip test that annoys people with problems within the hip joint. She's sleeping like that, or attempting to sleep like that, for hours, because when she stacked, her legs are just naturally falling across. So we've got to change number one, the way that she's sleeping, as far as treatment. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but we have to make sure that when she's sitting, her knees are below the level of the hips, so that her hips stay sort of open like this. It's not here. We can do that by having her sit on a wedge or something like that. Um, and when she's sleeping, we've got to make sure, you know, either she doesn't sleep on her back or on her side, or she puts a large enough pillow or something like that so her legs don't fall across. So just trying to figure out strategies to reduce symptoms. So again, first she can get a lot of sleep and then she can sit and move better. Um, all right, awesome. And then last thing, go ahead and lay on the, um, on the belly for me. Got it. All right, now just to be sure here, if this is an issue in the back, generally we're going to find that if we push on certain levels in the back, it can cause some um, of her symptoms to occur, uh, and she'll have some discomfort there. So I'm gonna try to, I'll go over here so we can see. So I'm gonna start sort of mid-back up here. You let me know if there's any problems. Okay, I'm gonna start gentle. So I'm just going sort of one by one down her lower back, joints and bones, if you will. Doing okay? Yeah. Doing okay? Yeah. Doing okay? Yeah. Now I'm going to sort of one by one here. You okay? Yep. You okay? You know if there's any issues? Nope, good. So I can't go any lower, otherwise I'm going to go into other structures. But that's going through her toe, her whole lower back, using different sort of pressures right, to try to provoke any type of issues. And sometimes what you'll get is you'll get sick symptoms that go 
down the leg, or in this case, might cause her shin pain or her ankle pain or whatever if somebody truly has a back problem. She doesn't have any um, issue there with the uh, lower back and no pain uh, throughout it. So last little thing, I'm just gonna wiggle sort of her legs here. So this is now the right side because she's on her belly. So this is her good side. We see, probably hard to see from the camera there, but she has pretty good motion and isn't um, you know, sensitive to any of those things. I'm gonna go slow here. All right, so that's all we can go. Yeah. That's all we can go. And what do you get when I do that? Uh, it even comes back in my butt some, but around my thigh and down my knee. Okay, got it. All right, so go ahead and sit on up for me. You can, please. All right, so in closing, a lot of people come to me frustrated because uh, they're, in her case, scheduled for uh, a lower back surgery. Uh, and had multiple fail injections, things like that, been passed from provider to provider. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, they've never really had a good uh, examination. Would you say it's the most thorough examination you've had? Yeah, no one's done that. Yeah, and that's even debrief for the, uh, for the point of just uh, the video. We've sort of shortened that down and just kind of gone through it for you all. But the point is that we need to take your story, right, and then we need to systematically just change one or two, thre one or two things within, in the examination using a super kind of smart systematic process to work through it to determine is this a back, is this a nerve, uh, is this a hip problem, or other problem, right? So um, hopefully that makes sense. And in her case, it's going to a problem um, in or about the hip. Now it could be a lot of things. Uh, in her case, the hip is very stiff. So again, it could be a bunch of things, but something within the hip joint there. Um, the diagnosis doesn't exactly uh, matter, but we can start treating by number one, putting out the fire. So teaching her specific ways to sleep differently, sit differently, so she's not in that pinch position, maybe like she is now. Notice she likes to kind of cross her legs here, so that will kink the hip in. And notice when I went through my test, that kind of bothers her. So she just habitually is doing things uh, that are sort of potentially flaring things up or nicking the scab. We need to have that conversation first. So once we do that, right, we can do less of that, which makes her feel worse. And we can teach her more of that, which makes her feel better, which are going to be specific movements just to gently regain uh, motion and try to sort of uh, calm things down and get you moving better. How does that sound? Cool. Cool. So uh, that's sort of a sample examination uh, and just like some basic treatment recommendations there, but really just uh, thoughtfully working through is this a back hip um, and or nerve problem. Um, so for anybody out there watching who found this helpful, um, like, comment, or share, and or call 484-552-3767 uh, if there's any issues there or, um, you know, you're trying to figure out, hey, is this a, is this a back? Is this a hip? Is this a nerve problem? Um, and for anybody who's sort of been tossed between uh, physicians and is still looking for natural relief. So thanks everyone for watching.